Even within the same species, livestock have different nutritional needs as they grow and mature through different phases of life. I'm Dr. Jessica Williamson, the Penn State Extension Forage Specialist. And I'm Dr. Tara Felix, the Penn State Extension Beef Specialist. And we want to talk to you about some specific examples of how to match forage quality to the nutritional requirements of livestock. Let's start with cattle. Mature bulls and dry cows have the lowest nutrient requirements of any class of cattle. The forage quality that would best match this class of cattle would be about 50% TDN, or total digestible nutrients. Total digestible nutrients is a calculation based on forage nutritive value. This class of cattle would also require about 9% crude protein, regardless of whether we are feeding grazed or harvested forages. The nutrient requirements from most mature cows and bulls can easily be met through forages alone, yet management of the forages is still needed to ensure forage quality is maintained. Mismanaged forages, resulting in very poor quality mature forage, will not even meet the basic nutrient requirements of these mature animals that have the least nutrient requirements of any other class. Growing heifers and yearling bulls have greater nutrient requirements than mature cattle. This class of cattle requires forages that contain about 65% TDN and 12% crude protein. In order to meet the nutritional needs of growing animals, closer attention must be paid to what forages are being offered. Their nutritional needs are greater than mature stock, so feeding less mature forages that have a greater nutrient concentration is essential. Adding clovers or other legumes could be an easy way to boost overall nutrient composition and help ensure the protein and energy requirements of these younger animals are being met. Finally, stocker calves are ideally gaining at least two pounds a day, and these stocker calves have the greatest nutritional requirements. About 70% or more TDN and 16% crude protein are required for this class of livestock. Implementing a managed grazing system for stocker cattle is essential and must be followed in order to meet their nutritional requirements throughout the grazing season. If being fed a harvested forage, a forage analysis should be done prior to feeding to ensure that the nutrient requirements will be met. When managing stocker calves, feeding forages in the actively growing early stages of maturity is essential. Sheep, on the other hand, need an overall higher forage quality than cattle. Non-lactating ewes have the lowest needs of any class of sheep. They can survive on cool season grasses without a lot of legumes. We generally consider forages with about 55% TDN and 9.5% crude protein to be adequate for this class of sheep. When ewes begin to lactate, however, they will need much more energy and protein about 65% TDN and 14% crude protein. Thus, when managing lactating ewes, it is especially important to pay attention to forage maturity to ensure adequate protein and energy levels are available. This increase in protein and energy requirements is even greater if that ewe is young and still growing herself, especially if she has more than one lamb. Now, twins are typical in sheep, and the ewe's nutrient requirements have to increase to support adequate lactation if she has two lambs. In this case, shoot for about a TDN of 70% and a crude protein of close to 16%. In order to meet the nutritional requirements of finishing lambs, we typically need to feed cool season annual grasses plus legumes to provide them with enough protein and energy. There are a few things to remember about grazing management when it comes to the balance between forage nutritive value and forage quality. Ruminants need to be given the opportunity to maximize their consumption of forages throughout the whole production process, and at no time should they be restricted in their intake of forage. For example, overgrazed pastures will not only result in poor long-term pasture productivity, but will also cause ruminants to have restricted forage intake and can result in poor average daily gains. Rotational grazing, or rotating animals from one paddock after they have grazed the forage down to the desired height and then moving them into another ungrazed paddock, 
has been shown to increase stocking rate and carrying capacity of the pasture, and in some cases has even contributed to greater animal performance. Rotational grazing is a great way to manage when and where your livestock are grazing on perennial pastures, and to control the stage of maturity at which the forages are being grazed. Strip grazing is another managed grazing system that works well when grazing annual or stockpiled forages. A forward fence should be placed as livestock are moved across the field to limit the space that is available to graze to optimize forage availability and reduce forage waste. Regardless of the species of livestock and species of forage, some type of managed grazing system should be employed to control the stage of forage growth to better match the nutritional needs of the animals, distribute nutrients evenly across the pasture, possibly reduce parasite load, and increase the possibility of improved pasture health. A continuously grazed system, like you're seeing here, is allowing the livestock to graze freely when and where they wish. This type of system is not ideal, as it leads to overconsumption in some areas of the pasture and underconsumption in other areas, which reduces the overall sustainability of a pasture system and allows the encroachment of undesired weeds and a reduction in total forage availability. Knowing the nutritive value of your forages and how to manage grazing resources can help you match the appropriate forage quality to the needs of your livestock.